In the previous video, we learned how to pre-render pages. Now, as it turns out, SwellKit also allows us to pre-render API routes. Let's take a look at an example in this video. To understand pre-rendering of API routes, I'm going to create an API route that is not really practical from a real-world application point of view. For now, I just want you to focus on the concept. I'm going to begin by creating a new API route. So within the routes folder, within the API folder, I'm going to create a new folder called current time. Within this folder, create a plus server.js file. I'm going to add a get handler function. So export async function get console log current time get handler invoked. The next line, return new response, new date dot to locale time string. Now let's run our application. In the terminal, npm run dev. If we now navigate to localhost port 5173 slash API slash current time, we have a problem because this is a function. Refresh, and we see the current time where I live. If I refresh, the time keeps changing. Let's now go back and pre-render this API route. Export const pre-render is equal to true. And now we build the application. So stop the dev server, run npm run build. When it's built, we should see the log statement from current time API route. In the dot sweltkit folder, with an output folder, pre-rendered, we should now have an API folder. In the current time file, we have the time logged when the get handler was invoked during the build. If we now run npm run preview, go back to the browser, this time localhost port 4173 slash API slash current time, we see the same time present in the output folder. Refresh as many times as you want to, and it will remain the same. On similar lines, if you have a fetch function that pulls data from an external API, that data would be saved in the output folder and reused for any request to that endpoint. A change in the external API data will not be reflected in your page. Another important point about pre-rendering API routes is that they will inherit default values from the pages that fetch data from them. I'm going to remove this pre-render option in plusserver.js and in the home page load function, I will call the current time get handler. So destructure fetch, const response is equal to await fetch, and the API endpoint is slash API slash current time. Convert response to plain text and return the current time. In page.svelte file, let's add the data prop, export let data, and bind welcome to SvelteKit at Data dot current time. Let's now rebuild our application and start it. npm run build and then npm run preview. If you now navigate to the home page, we see the same time every time we refresh. So the API route has been pre rendered because the page that fetches the data has pre-render set to true. 
So page.js has pre-render set to true, which automatically makes the API route pre-render set to true. If you think about it, you can't really pre-render the page if the time were to continuously change in the background. So SwelteKit makes the decision for us to pre-render an API route when the consuming load function has pre-render option set to true. If you take a look at the pre-render folder, you can see we now have a new folder called dependencies. Here we have the API folder and current time. This is the data that gets served in the browser and a fetch request is never made to the get handler every time you make a request in the browser. So if you have API routes where the data does not necessarily change often, pre-rendering them is a good choice. All right, if this makes sense, let's dive into a few more important details about the pre-render option in the next video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.